Hey guys, in the last video we went through the whole printing process from beginning to end. We printed out a skull and I told you in the next video we would go over and I would walk through the process of airbrushing it. Unfortunately that's not going to happen. I did record the whole thing and when I went to look at it and check the quality, the quality just wasn't there. And uh, I, I will be doing an airbrush video in the near future, but I want to make sure I get my... Uh, quality issues resolved before I put that out. So hang tight. In the meantime, I can show you here are a couple of uh, still shots of what the finished product looked like, just to give you an idea. And we will get into that more in the future. So for today, we're going to switch gears. I want to get into something that I just needed to print recently. And uh, a lot of people have a hard time with it. I've even seen some people say that you can't do it with a printer with a Bowden extruder. You need a direct feed, and that is TPU printing. So it's a new day, made it through the holiday, and I hope everyone had a safe and happy holiday. Um, before we get on to the TPU, just want to remind everybody, please feel free to subscribe. Be a great late Christmas present. Like the video. Um, hopefully it helps you out and hopefully all my videos help you out. Let's get to the TPU. So TPU stands for thermal plastic polyurethane. Now what makes it different from other plastics that you might have already worked with like PLA, ABS, or PETG is that it's flexible. For today's video, we're just going to be making a simple fidget cube slash infinity cube slash whatever you want to call it just to show you some of the properties of it. You can see here that it is definitely flexible. Um, that's not a bunch of cubes being held together by any kind of tape or anything. That's one piece of TPU plastic. And you'll also notice that you can actually squeeze it um, depending on your infill settings. And it'll spring right back. You see it a lot in the real world in phone cases. Um, because of that durability, it's good for shock absorption. Um, you can also use it to make things like cable ties. Uh, I, I use it to make replacement uh, feet for different things that uh, the feet might have cracked the original plastic. So it has a lot of uses. I'm sure you can think of a lot more than I'm thinking of right now. But there are some things you definitely want to know before you attempt to print it. It is not quite as easy to use and work with as PLA is or even P PETG. So we're going to go through the settings in Cura right now and hopefully it'll give you an idea how to get a good print with TPU. So we have Cura loaded and I have loaded the STL for the Infinity Cube. I'll post a link to that STL file down in the uh, comments section if anyone wants to load it. And I'm starting with the default settings that I usually use for PLA, but we definitely need to make some adjustments if we want this to print properly. As you can see, it's it's not that crazy of an object. Um, going simple. Basically, it's just a rectangle with some cuts in it. But let's get to the settings. So the number one thing you need to know whenever you're printing tpu is it doesn't matter how fast your printer is it doesn't matter if you have a sonic pad clipper or anything like that plu needs to be printed very slowly it's kind of a gooey substance when it's hot and uh if you try to print it at your normal speeds that you would use for pla you're gonna end up with a big gooey mess everywhere um my suggestion, I haven't gone any higher, but I really don't like gooey messes. So uh, all the suggestions I've seen say to print it at about 20 millimeters per second, which is honestly painfully slow. But, uh, you know, if you want flexible plastic, that's what you have to do. So that's the number one thing you need to change. Um, the printing temperatures for TPU are also different. I typically use 210 degrees for my hot end and the build plate I usually set to 60 degrees. Now on top of that I also uh, use a glue stick on my bed just to uh, 
not so much for bed adhesion, but to make it easier to remove from the bed while still getting bed adhesion. Uh, if you don't, I the first time I print the TPU, I sat there just scraping pieces off of my glass bed for a while. If you're using a different type of bed, a PEI bed, uh, you know, something like that, your mileage may vary, but uh, the glue stick in my case was definitely needed. So as far as the temperatures, that's going to vary with what brand of plastic you're using. Personally, I always use Sunlu filaments. Uh, they're cheap. Amazon has them in stock and can deliver them pretty quickly. And they just work well for me. I'm, I'm not getting anything from Sunlu for saying that. It's just honestly what I've used since I started printing. I'll post a link in the comments so that you can take a look if you're interested. But uh, it, it's always worked well for me regardless of the material I'm using for my print. Uh, having said that, regardless of what plastic you're using, anytime you're going to print something new like this and you're making big changes like a new material, different nozzle size, I, I would always recommend running a speed test and a retraction test just to get an idea for what the best looking settings are for you. Um... Again, in my case, it's 210 degrees for the hot end, 60 degrees for the build plate temperature. The next setting you definitely want to keep in mind whenever you're printing TPU is your retraction settings. Um, a couple notes about this. A, like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of people will tell you that you should have a direct feed extruder in order to print TPU at all. While I won't say that wouldn't help because there's much less travel, you can definitely do a 3D print with a Bowden tube setup. I'm using a CRS CR10S Pro V2, which has a pretty long Bowden tube, and I am not running into problems. Now, a couple things I will say about that. It, Depending on your device, if you're going to use a Bowden tube, you know, and for those of us that don't know what a Bowden tube is, it's basically a Teflon tube that your filament runs through between the extruder and the hot end. Um, you want a good quality one. If you go to any videos that are out there, almost to the person, they all say Capricorn Bowden tubes are the way to go. I would highly recommend it. The CR10S Pro V2 comes with a Capricorn tube from the factory. Um, you can definitely find them on Amazon, and that's another link I'll post at the bottom for you to look at if you're going to go out and get a Bowden tube. Uh, the other thing is TPU is kind of a stretchy material. So you definitely need to be careful with your retraction settings. Um, you, you'll see here, typically I use five millimeters at a 55 millimeter per, se per second retraction speed. You want to retract less and you want to retract more slowly with TPU to prevent clogs and breaks in the filament. Um, like I said, it's stretchy but you definitely can't retract too far too fast or you will end up having problems. Um, having said that, I, I wouldn't turn the retraction completely off like people recommend, especially if you're going to be printing something with that usually would have a lot of retracts because TPU is very sus subject to stringing just because of its stretchy nature. Um, so a little retraction is good. You can get away with it regardless of what anyone else might tell you. And, and you'll see that in a few minutes when, uh, we actually print this part. The last thing we need to talk about when we're talking about printing TPU is your supports. Now your supports, I'm not going to say you can't use supports with TPU. And obviously this part that we're trying to print, we're not going to need to use supports. But I would say that you want to try and orient your print to use as few as possible. Um, 
basically when you print the TPU, again, it's a stretchy, sticky substance when it's hot. And the supports, when they cool down, um, they will stick to each other a lot more than PLA will. They will sag more while you're printing than PLA will. So what ends up happening is the supports are very hard to cut off. You can cut them off with a exacto knife or even with a pair of straight cutters. Um, what you're going to end up with, though, if you have too many supports, is probably a bunch of little nub marks. And TPU, because of its flexible nature, I wouldn't say it's a great uh, material to try and sand after the fact like you can with PLA. So y you want to try and print something that A, doesn't need supports, or B, cut the supports down as few as you can and try to put them in areas that aren't going to be as noticeable on the finished product because they can be kind of a pain to get rid of. Um, so be aware Again, I would recommend trying all this stuff on your own. And if anyone has a better way to do any of this, please let me know. Um, I'm learning just like everyone else. And I always love to hear new things that we can do to make the printing process better. So that's all the settings we need. And one quick time lapse and we will be done. Okay, guys, we're all done. Um, you can see here came out pretty well. Good edges. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot of opportunity for stringing or anything on this, but I want to just get the basic settings out there for you guys. And as we can see, it is flexible. Um, and as we can also see, hopefully you can see it, it is pretty squishy stuff. I only used a 10% infill on this, but it bounces right back. So that's a quick introduction to TPU printing for everyone. Um, and now I have something to play with for the next God only knows how long. Um, like I say in every video, if you guys like the videos, uh, hopefully I'm giving you good information. If you like the videos, please click the subscribe button, click the like button. And if there's anything that you want to see printed, um, please put it in the comments. And uh, if I find it interesting and uh, it's something I want to print, then we'll print it. And uh, maybe we can work on some issues you guys are having. And until next time, uh, keep on printing. Thanks.